glitches that still work for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl version 1.3.0. This game used to be packed full of glitches to do, like duplicating Pokemon, surfing on land to catch Shaman, and so much more. But after the final patch on March 15th, 2022, a bunch of the best ones were removed from the game. So which ones still work? I'm here to cover that today, as well as a foolproof method to access version 1.1.1, the one that still has all the glitches. Got a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. Let's kick this off with something not that useful, but still interesting. It's possible to have the incorrect music while playing in a town or route. Obviously, when you cross over a certain row of tiles, a banner will pop up showing the new area that you're in, and the music will fade out for the next track. Well, by quickly and carefully crossing over that row of tiles and then turning back, we can trigger the new track to play while staying in our original location. Take this instance in Eterna City, for example. The row of tiles right before this patch of grass is the trigger for Route 205 and a different music track. By walking up to the row and quickly turning around, we can get the Route 205 music to play while in Eterna City. Here's another example with one of my favorite tracks in the game, Route 209. By doing the same technique, we can get the track to play in Celestion Town. As a little bonus, if you unlock the DS Sounds Key item by entering the Hall of Fame, we can simply turn it on while the glitch is active and it'll carry over as well, giving us a little bit of nostalgia while exploring the town. Again, nothing crazy, but I still enjoy this glitch as it feels weird to be in a town while a route track is playing. Okay, this next one involves phasing through a wall, which sounds exciting, but it's kind of lame. Sorry. In Snowpoint City, there is a Pokemart in the bottom left area. Don't enter it just yet, instead walk over to the left side, shove your face against the wall, and hold upright on your control stick. Your character will slowly shimmy towards the door, and when you're close enough, will do this. Perform the enter door animation in the wrong spot, phasing through the wall. Way to go. You don't clip out of bounds or anything doing this, you still just transition into the Pokemart. So it's just a way cooler way of doing so. Strangely enough, this glitch only works in Snowpoint City at this Pokemart. Trust me, I would know as I spent 20 minutes traveling to every single Pokemart in Sinnoh. None of them will do this. Maybe it has something to do with the snow causing your character to walk a little slower, but I'm not sure. None of the other buildings in Snowpoint do this either, so it's a super exclusive glitch that you definitely need to know. Here's a glitch that I found all on my own while messing around in the game. In every Pokemon Center, if you go upstairs, you can access the local Union Room. This is where you can connect with friends nearby and trade Pokemon. That's not super important for this glitch though, and you don't need friends. Simply enter it all by yourself. I couldn't tell you why, but I decided I needed to enter with a link code, in case someone in my house bought a Switch and a copy of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond without telling me, and just so happened to be in the local Union Room three years after the game came out. I didn't want them seeing me. Anyway, jeez. Once inside, quickly run over to the NPC in the corner while the communicating please stand by message is still up. This text box prevents the lady from talking to you, meaning we can just spam the A button while running around her. The result is this very weird looking moonwalk stutter step. Run backwards after mashing A and your character will continuously face them while running away. This state will last roughly 20 seconds, so get in as much moonwalking as you can before the message goes away. After that, the lady will talk to you like normal and the glitch ends. Don't worry though, you can just go out and back in to do the glitch all over again. How fun. This next glitch, funny enough, is not only possible in BDSP, but also Pokemon Sword and Shield as well. If you watch my still working glitches on that game, you may even remember it. All we gotta do is catch a Pokemon. What? In a Pokemon game? Yeah, I know. But the most important part is what comes after. Following you catching one, you have a chance to give it a nickname. Say yes and name it Egg. That's it. Just E-G-G. -G, and the glitch will activate. You'll notice the first effect when you send it to your box. The message will read, the egg has been sent to a box, which is weird as the the text doesn't usually appear with Pokemon. It would just say, Pikachu has been sent to a box, not the Pikachu has been sent to a box. But wait, there's more. If you go into your box and now select that Pokemon, it will read, what do you want to do with the egg? So the game clearly has some trigger where if the name is egg, it's meant to throw a the in front of it so it doesn't just read, what do you want to do with egg? caveman talk, right? I guess they never expected anyone in the world to actually name a Pokemon Egg, so they just threw this rule in there. 
I don't think there's any other special effects besides these strings of text. I was hoping it wouldn't let that Pokemon be the only one in your party or something, because you can't do that with regular eggs, but nope. Still, I think the best part of this is that two completely different Pokemon games made by two completely different studios, ILCA and Game Freak, have this same glitch. Obviously, this just means they reuse some of Sword and Shield's code, which is normal for games in any series, really, but still. Neat and pointless. My favorite. Now onto a glitch involving the literal creator of Sinnoh. R.C. Uh, sorry, sorry. Arceus. I hate saying it that way, but I guess it's the correct pronunciation. Anyway, in order to see this glitch, you will have to have them registered in your Pokedex. Or just watch this video and never think about it again, because it's pretty pointless. Some of you may not know this, as I didn't either, but if you open your Pokedex and pull up the calculator app, there's a little Easter egg. Typing in the national Pokedex number of any Pokemon you've registered, and then just pressing enter, will play the cry of whatever Pokemon it is. So for example, Bulbasaur is number one, so if you type one and press the enter key, you will hear it cry. Didn't even know this was a thing, but for some strange reason, typing in 493, the Pokedex number for Arceus, no cry will play after pressing enter. It's very strange, as again, this easter egg only works with Pokemon you have registered in your Pokedex. If I didn't have Bulbasaur, then no cry would play when I press 1. But I do in fact have Arceus, as he's right here, and he's number 493, and still, no cry plays. And, uh, yeah, those were all the glitches I was able to find. Trust me when I say, I really tried to find all the remaining ones. I spent hours redoing glitches from old videos and just came up short every time. For a quick example, and I guess proof that they are all patched, take a look at this railing clip in the old chateau. In the old version 1.1.1, pay attention to how close I can stand near the railings here. I can push right up against them. All you have to do now is encounter a Pokemon, run from it, and boom. Your character gets clipped inside of the railing. We can then snap down to the floor and get out of bounds, even if it's only in this tiny section. Now, in 1.3.0, this is how the railings behave. Behave. You pretty much have a single tile and can't move left or right, because the dev solution for this glitch was literally just to slap a big invisible wall around the place. Like look at this clip here. It's ridiculous and it's also obvious that the devs watched someone's video, maybe even mine, and were like, nah, this is unacceptable. Another glitch I really was hoping would still work is leaving without a starter. You're supposed to use your rival to trade places, but even after shoving him this far into the wall, the devs clearly added a check to prevent you from swapping places while here. I've really tried with this one guys. I spent a good 20 minutes ever so slowly shimming him along this edge while keeping him out, hoping I could reach the corner near Lake Verity. But these trees completely block my path. I tried everything, but it's safe to say this one is patched, along with just about every other insane glitch from the 1.1.1 version. But not all hope is lost yet. You may have noticed that there's still some time left on this video, and that's because I wanted to talk about a way that you could go back to version 1.1.1, or 1.1.2, where all of the best glitches are still alive. Before you ask, the original base 1.0.0 version doesn't have all the glitches the other versions do. There are some, but not the full list of crazy ones. So either 1.1.1 or 1.1.2 is our goal here. After doing some research, there are two methods. The second method is guaranteed to work, but you may have to spend a little money. The first and likely easier method is using the Switch's match version with local users feature. This allows you to connect with another Switch that also has Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl on their system. However, in order for this to work, someone will have to have version 1.1.1 or 1.1.2 already. So if you have a buddy that never updated their software past this point, you're probably good to go. The other caveat is that this feature updates everyone to whoever has the most recent version. Meaning that if you're over here with 1.3.0 and your friend is on 1.1.1, it would update their version to 1.3.0, which you do not want. The solution to this requires you to have a physical copy of the game and delete the software along with the saved data. Then when you put your copy back in, you would likely be on 1.0.0. Then you could use the match version feature to push yourself up to 1.1.1. This is one way to do it, but again requires two switches, a physical copy, and someone that still already has 1.1.1. Because if you bought the game digitally off the eShop, every time you re-downloaded the game, it would already come pre-installed with the newest version 1.3.0. So it has to be physical. However, there is a more foolproof method that doesn't require all this extra stuff. Method 2. Getting a physical cartridge with version 1.1.1 built into it. 
Yes, you heard me correctly. Nintendo actually releases cartridge revisions with certain versions or updates automatically on the physical game. How do I know this? Because I bought one without even realizing it. So I own both Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl cartridges. They look the same until you flip them over and look real closely. Below the engraved HAC008 is this string of gray text. The beginning doesn't matter, but look at the final three digits. My Brilliant Diamond ends in 001, while my Shining Pearl ends in 000. Take a wild guess at what that means. I bought Pearl on launch day, so it makes sense that putting it into a brand new switch would give me the version 1.0.0. However, I didn't buy Diamond until a little later. I can't for the life of me remember exactly when, but I think it was only a month or two after release. And thank god I did, because putting in the Diamond cart, again, the one with the gray text ending in 001, into a brand new Switch automatically gives you version 1.1.1. This is huge. So in simple terms, whatever number your cartridge ends with is the version you will have when putting it into your Switch. This means if you own a physical version of the game, take a look at the back. If your gray text ends in either 001 or 002, you are set for life. 001 comes pre-installed with version 1.1.1, and 002 comes with 1.1.2. These are the best two versions, by the way, I know I keep saying that, but I'm pretty confident 1.1.1 has the most glitches. Also to clarify, this is obviously after putting your game into a Switch that hasn't played it before. So if you have a 001 cartridge, but have already played through the game, updated it and everything, you'll have to go into the options menu and delete the software. Then when you put your cartridge back in, it'll be back to 1.1.1. So yeah, check the cartridge you have if you do own a physical one and see if you're lucky enough to have this version. If not, you may have to scour eBay or some other marketplace and find a cartridge that does. You have to really analyze the pictures they provide though and hopefully they have one of the back of the cartridge. I don't think the actual Switch case itself has any identifying features like any numbers or anything. I think it's only on the cart itself. So you could technically buy a sealed version of the game and just take a gamble, but that would be wasting money most likely. But there are two methods to getting back to version 1.1.1. If you can't, then hey, there are still these six amazing ones you can do in 1.3.0, right? Haha. <laughs> in case you need a guide on how to do glitches in 1.1.1, check out the big video I made a while ago. There are so many insane glitches in that version, it's actually nuts. But I think that about does it for this video. I know the glitches in here weren't anything spectacular, but this has been my most requested video for a while, so I wanted to put it out anyway. If you want some other Switch Pokemon games that do have good glitches that still work, I made videos on literally every other release. Sword and Shield, Legends Arceus, and the Let's Go series all have pretty amazing glitches, so check those out if you're in the mood. But for now, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, see ya!